Previously in Round Sailing, we finished the last preparations for the coming passage from Hawaii to Alaska. We got a tour by John and Amanda on their Halberasi Mahina Tiare and enjoyed our last evening on the beach. The weather had improved and we now saw a good weather window to sail north. The day for departure was June 20, and it was time to say goodbye to Hawaii. This year means a lot of sailing for us. When we reach Kodiak, Alaska, we will have sailed over 6,600 nautical miles in four months. Last year we sailed 2,300 nautical miles, so it's quite a difference. The sail will be around 2,200 nautical miles and expecting to take between 16 to 18 days. John and Amanda on Mahina Tiara the other day, we got a free coupon or yeah, some free service, weather service from a company called VRI and uh, yeah, that was just a guy from VRI I had on the phone so we got some uh, updates on the weather and uh, yeah, obviously from a metrologist or whatever you call it in English and uh, yeah, he gave us some updates on the weather and they, they have also sent us some free uh, yeah, routing from what they think is the best route to take north. And, uh, and they concur that this is a good window that we have uh, decided to go on. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we will use it again. We guess now the coupon is we have used it. Set. And I think another call, or if we want some more of them, it's like fifty dollars per uh, per forecast, or maybe seventy. So I don't know. Uh, if we feel unsure about anything, maybe we give them a call. Otherwise, I think we'll just use the normal grid files with the uh, reading to go. But it feels nice to get the second opinion on uh, on the forecast. Of course, especially from a guy who's working with this every day. So, so it feels good that we have picked a good window. We've been sailing for a while now, only with the head sail, but we're doing like five knots of speed, which is good. And we save fuel. Oh, actually 5.7. So there's a little bit more wind now. Right now it's between 15 and 16 knots on a broad reach. So I guess the winds are a little bit from the east, east, southeast. Mm. We have, uh, we have like two miles to go until we're gonna change course and head more to the north. 
and after that I think we have like 11 miles before we are leaving the island behind. So we're sailing next to a restricted area. Um, I guess this is where they get all the oil and fuel from the tankers coming to the island. There's no marina or harbor big enough for the oil tankers. So I think they, yeah, they have some pipeline out at sea here. So we uh, have to avoid that. Actually, the Coast Guard called us, yeah, I don't know, like a half an hour ago because our course on the AIS was right into this area. Of course, we were going to of the course but they didn't know that so they called us up on the BHF and uh, asked us what our intentions were but we'll make sure to stay outside of this so when we're ready with that uh, I think we're going to change course and head more north and maybe pull up the main we'll see it might be that the mountain over here will blanket the wind so the wind will drop to zero but we'll see feels Great to be on the way, finally. There's always so much stuff that you need to do before you leave, and it seems like it's a never-ending story of stuff. But it's nice when you're ready to go, and I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty far, long sail. It's like an Atlantic crossing going up to Alaska from here. But at least for the first week, it will be nice weather and pretty warm. And uh, after that, we'll see. I'm not worried. It's the summer now, so we should have decent weather. To stay here in Hawaii, I wish it were we could have stayed longer, doing more, visited more islands. And, but because the season up north is so short, and we had so much stuff to do on the boat, and friends coming in and visiting. It wasn't possible, so maybe next time. Perfect. There's too much pressure on it. So it bend backwards? No, but there's some leverage here. So it wasn't very easy to hold it stable. I think it's easier if you have it this way, so it's dragging instead of you pointing in the direction we're ah, okay. going. So I think I will turn the camera around and see if I can hold it yeah, like this. Instead. That's a good idea. We have hoist the main sail as well now, so now we have both sails up, but there is hardly any wind, so we have like 6.6 knots of wind, still doing 4.7 knots though of speed. So it's going slow, it's calm, uh, which is nice. It's always nice to have like an easy start first day of your uh, passage no matter how long it is, if, but if it's more than like a day, it's, it's so nice. And yeah, we've just been relaxing. We got a call from my Amanda and John and Mahina Tiare, the Halvarasi that we met the, the other week. They were just beside us, closer to the coast, out sailing with the, on their friend's boat, which was fun. So we're now sailing by the Cape or the point, I don't know what you call it, uh, which marks our departure of Oahu and Hawaii. So from here on we're just gonna set course straight north, more or less. So this whole day we've just been sailing along Oahu. So that's always like, it makes you 
it makes it a little bit harder to leave because it's not like you leave straight away and you just head out and you the land disappears pretty fast here it's like you're just sailing along the coast like oh that's a nice place oh and that's a nice place so it makes it a little bit more hard but we really loved Hawaii and uh, yeah I mean we knew that we weren't gonna spend that much time here because the reason why we went here was to be able to go to Alaska so to have the winds with us and not uh, going north along the coast of uh, the US because that's and Mexico it's pretty hard it's north you have headwinds and the current against you yeah we're doing a lot of sailing these months but um, yeah I mean, that's the thing about traveling man. like it's always sad to go to leave one place but you know like you're going to a new place which is gonna be really nice in its own way so we're looking forward to that So I was just about to take out the reef we have in the mainsail but there's a squall coming by so now I'm not so sure anymore if I will take out that reef. Sometimes it's pretty hard to know if a squall contains a lot of wind or not. But of course it's better to be on the safe side so I think I'll let it sit for now until this has passed. A squall is a local weather system that often contains rain and stronger winds. These are very common in the trade wind belts. There's a lot of cumulus clouds. The Pacific High is pretty stable at the moment here. So you get these line squalls coming by. So I would guess that the winds are not higher than 20 knots in there. So. I've been so tired since we left, but I think it's just all the stress from all the preparations we need to do before and then you, when you come out, you let go of all that and then you get tired. Yeah. And also of course you're out at sea, the motion of the boat, we've been like in a very calm arena, like the boat hasn't moved at all for several weeks and you leave that and go out. Um, I have to get used to it and time, so we've been tired, but we've been lucky with good weather and there's not really strong winds, but I think that's fine. And so I would say it's been a good first 24 hours. So now the rain is coming and the wind has dropped to just below 10 knots. Could be because it's the rain is coming first and then the wind comes afterwards. Normally if it's a squall where the wind comes first and then the rain, they last shorter. But if it's the other way around, so first rain and then wind, they normally last longer. So hoping for wind first, but yeah, it doesn't seem to happen. So I guess it's gonna be a long time. So now the wind is coming back. Not a lot of wind in this one. It's just like it went down to nine apparent, and now it's up to 13, 14 apparent. There's still some rain over there, but I think the most of it will miss us. Uh, oh no, it's shifting a bit. 
or an autopilot, so I had to change course now. Well, there were some wind in this, after all. And now the, the heavy rain is coming. But that will take down the wind again. So it peaked out at 17 knots. And now as soon as the rain kicks in, the wind drops again. There was a slightly shifting direction, but not a lot, like 20 degrees. Now the wind is down to 14 knots apparent. We're doing eight knots. Speed over ground. Yeah. Quite a lot of rain in this one. It's such a strange phenomenon this with with these squalls. They come up so fast on you and the wind increase, you get a lot of rain and then suddenly like this one lasted maybe I don't know two minutes with the wind and the rain. And now it's all over. I mean, there's still some rain, but in three or four minutes from now, it will be as nothing has happened. But it's nice when you get them at when it's uh, daylight. I don't like the squalls at night because it's so hard to tell how big they are, how strong they're going to be. Because sometimes you can see on the sea before the squall if it's. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of white caps in front of it, you can kind of tell if there's a lot of wind, wind in it. But at night, that's really hard. And you get surprised a lot of times by it. If you have a radar, you can see if there's a lot of rain in it. But of course, then you need to have the radar running all, all the time. So, And we don't have a radar. So, now it's all over. Ah, oh, this was kind of funny. Turns out this is like a double squall. A lot of times in the trades you get like squalls forming in a line. And sometimes you're unlucky and hit two of them in a row. But it's pretty unusual when you have the wind and the beam. Because normally you will sail past the line. Sometimes if you're downwind you can get a couple of them before it's over. But Kind of strange that they were positioned in a way that we'll hit two of them in a row, even if we're having the wind in from yeah, 60 degrees now. We kept the course more to the west to get a better wind angle. When we are further north, the wind will start to come from the west, and we will change course. <laughs> He's trying to land the top of the mast. This just happened. The fruit net broke. So this is where it used to be. Oh. I just heard a loud bang. I thought we had hit something. <laughs> it was just the, all the apples and oh shit. The bananas. No. I guess we need to eat some bananas today. Mm -hmm. It's really warm. I tried to put up this net again. It's not the perfect, but it's the only place to have it on, so I don't think it looks better now. I put it in this frame instead. <laughs> I guess we're going to eat some mashed apple apples today. <laughs> Oh, 
the wind wane working great actually yeah, so we haven't replaced the towing generator that we lost uh, on our way coming to from Costa Rica to Hawaii so well it was good to have that one because it did give us that extra amount of electricity that we were lacking so I mean we use the computers a lot and the autopilot takes quite a lot of um, electricity so during this crossing we just have to run the generator um, more often does that look okay yep thank you for watching this episode and for tuning in on our channel please like share and subscribe we really appreciate it we post real-time updates on instagram and facebook on our whereabouts see you next week